Hey everyone, we are now joined by Olympic gold medalist Jordan Larson, an outside hitter for the women's national team. Jordan, thank you so much for joining us here on Above the Net. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, we're so excited to have you. And what's really cool about Above the Net is that we want to give a name and an identity to the girls' volleyball scene here in the in the state of Michigan in the MHSAA. And for most girls playing, their dream is to be in your shoes, to be where you are. So to get to know you better, we have to dial it back a little bit to your origin. How did you originally start playing volleyball? Yeah, so I grew up in a really small town, and because of that, I was able to play in a lot of different sports. So I really just tried everything. I was in soccer, I was in softball, basketball, I ran track in high school. So I, yeah, just got exposure and just really fell in love with the sport of volleyball. And um, I love that you needed a lot of people to make one point and uh, it's a lot of teamwork and a lot of communication. That's that's really why I, like why I fell in love with it. Well, being a dual sport athlete, we can definitely see how dynamic you are out on the court. And I mean, we have to talk about the Olympics, right? You have a gold, silver and a bronze medal, but it was so fitting that you had the kill that gave USA the gold medal during the Tokyo Olympics. What was going through your mind in that moment? Oh, so surreal. I think it's just, you know, a culmination of emotions. You know, like you said, I've been to previous two and always kind of came up short and, um, just having that final kill and just walking away with the gold, it still seems very surreal and something that is like, I wake up every day and I'm like, did that just happen? Like what? I don't know. It's just so, I, I don't know when it's ever going to hit me, but it's, uh, it's been an unreal experience and, and I take a lot of pride in representing our country and um, to do that on the biggest stage is, is pretty cool. Yeah, most certainly. And I mean, just when we look at your role with the women's national team, you joined in 2009, became a captain in 2017. I mean, how did you fall into that leadership role? Because that's a lot of weight on your shoulders, like you said, competing on the biggest stage. Yeah, it's something that I wasn't always great at. I think for me, uh, it's something that I had to learn over time. Um, I, I think in general, I always try to lead by example. So my work ethic and kind of how I held a standard of myself um, in the gym. Uh, but something that I really had to hone in was how do I still can control those things, but also help those around me. And, you know, by doing that, it's like communicating forward, you know, communicating about the next play and, and just using my knowledge and experience to, to help those around me. And so um, it definitely didn't come naturally for me. And uh, something that I'm still trying to work on today is how do I continue to sharpen that sword and, and really try to be better in that area. But um, yeah, it's, uh, again, to think about all the captains that came before me and everybody that set an example for me and how to be the best that I could be um, really helped me um, try to be the best that I could. Well, leading by example certainly speaks volumes. And when we just talk about who you are and the kind of person that you are, you want to keep developing your game and being a better leader, which I said I think speaks a lot about you. And even today, you were just saying that you're getting ready to hit the gym now <laughs> to yeah. get ready. Yeah. And just looking at the sport of volleyball, I mean, it's so mentally taxing. How do you stay on top of your game in that mental aspect? Yeah, yeah, it, it is tough. And I, I think like you said, I think I, I just never settled. Like, I think I've always like, well, what can I get better at? And what can I do? And I think that applies to the mental side. And I think also asking for help, you know, even when things aren't going well, there was times in my career where I feel like, oh, I'm just playing like the worst volleyball right now, or, you know, and oftentimes we are our harshest critic. But if we have someone that can help us, um, whether that's a sports psych or a coach that you really value their opinion and talk to them about how you're feeling and, and give have them give you tools. Or now there's a new app coming out or that did come out. It's called Neuro, NeuroFuel app. And it allows young athletes to learn how to control their emotions and being able to work on the mental side because it's, it's half the battle, over half the battle, you know? And so being able to sharpen that tool as well is, is really crucial and, and to be able to train that side of it. And I think athletes are lucky now that there's something tangible um, and an example that you can kind of lean on through that, where maybe for me, it was more, you know, talking to sports psychs and doing and things like that to, to help sharpen that, that, that sort. Mental health is so important. And just talking about the obstacles that we've had to face over the last year and a half with COVID-19, when that first came into play, what was your head state when it came to the sport that you love to play? 
Yeah, um, there was definitely a lot of emotions and questions, you know, but I, I'm, I think what we learn as athletes is being able to reset quick. And I, you know, kind of question in my mind, I'm older, right? Uh, at the time I was 33 and gosh, I'm going to be 34 at the Olympics. You know, can I still do it? Am I still, you know, I wasn't feeling the best. And so I think a lot of those doubts crept in, but I was like, no, like I'm determined to use this time as, as an advantage. And um, honestly, I think it was like the biggest blessing in my, my journey as far as, um, I was able to completely shut down, uh, as a volleyball athlete, we don't have much time off. Um, you know, we're, you know, in from one season overseas rolling straight to the national team. And so with maybe 10 days off in between. And so honestly, the pandemic was the most time I have had off in like almost 12 years. And, um, to be able to completely shut down and really ramp back up and, focus on the weight room and all those things really, really helped me and set me up for success. And I would, I would co probably confidently say that I was probably in the best shape that I've been in at this Olympics than I had the previous two. Wow. Well, I mean, like you said, it's just a huge shift that you had to go through. And, you know, you talked about the span of the year, what you do, and you're always bouncing around. You don't really have that much time off. Walk us through a typical day in the life of an Olympic athlete. Yeah, so it just kind of varies on the time of the year. So most time we're with our professional teams overseas, um, and that's up to eight months uh, of the year. And we're training usually double days uh, with one day off a week uh, with usually two matches per week. Um, and then when we shift to the national team, we are usually I practice one time a day, but lifting three times a week. Um, and we only we do it in one long session. So we're in the gym from sometimes I usually get there early, so 7 a.m. until maybe 2 p.m. Um, and so, and that's active work most of the time. But I take a long time to warm up, so probably an hour warm up and then, and then rolling into things. Um, and then we uh, travel quite a bit uh, with the national team. So uh, sometimes we're on the road for up to six to seven weeks um, and then uh, with not much time off in between there. So. Wow, I felt crazy. a little I felt a little winded just going up the flight of stairs here <laughs> to get into the office. So that puts that into perspective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, what's so cool about the sport of volleyball and especially what you're doing, you're saying you're playing overseas and then you come back and spend time with the national team. You're meeting people from other cultures in different places and it's so important, you know, when we talk about what's happening on the court but outside of it, what lessons do you feel that you've learned just being in that environment? Yeah, like you said, it, you, it's most of the teams overseas that I've been a part of, some of them, nobody speaks English. And so learning how to communicate and how to communicate effectively, and maybe you're not always getting what you feel like is the right thing or whatever. And then you come back and you just have this reef, like, like refresh of like, oh my gosh, like what a blessing that we get to communicate and communicate effectively, effectively with our teammates. And um, I think every time I come back to the United States, I just, don't get me wrong, like I know that, we've been going through a lot as a nation and there's a lot of things that aren't right in in the u.s but we are beyond blessed to have what we have and to to get to do what we do and have the freedoms that we do because like you said i've been a lot of places and a lot of cultures that they don't have that and um uh just very blessed and i think that's why i take a lot of pride in, in representing the, the national team is because it's it's so we're so privileged and um it's it's so wonderful yeah and i mean i would agree with you i think that's something that we really do take for granted here in the u.s but that kind of makes me want to ask you if you have any stories because earlier in the interview you said that it can be a little tricky when it comes to communication even just with your own teammates so when you're thinking about people who can't even necessarily speak the language of speak english i mean how tough was yep. that for you out on the court like are there any funny stories or at least you guys have like a hand signal or you yeah. speak certain terms <laughs> i'm just guessing here yeah you can talk now <laughs> yeah for sure yeah for sure and sometimes i was just speaking english like because I, I was just making sound you know sounds and like trying to learn simple like for example in russia like most people didn't speak english on the court and so i had to learn simple, simple terms like mine and yes or no and then but i never ever really learned like high low inside you know so it was a lot of pointing or you know shorter or you know just trying to to do the best i could with that um yeah it's i i don't remember any stories off the top of my head but right now but yeah a lot of times it was um just 
where do I need to go and what do I need to do and try and figure it out. But I think the the thing in regards to the level, I think what ha- has helped me along the way is being able to read the game. And if I can read the game and read kind of what is happening without a lot of cues going on around me or a lot of help, then that's going to help me have a long-term career. And so I think having that ability um, really kind of negated a lot of those communication issues uh, along the way. Wow. And this might be a bit of a silly question, but you think about the sport of soccer, or well, in most places, football, you think that they have different styles of play. Is that the same case yep. for volleyball when you're traveling around? There's different styles. Yeah, for sure. So when I went to Russia, uh, it was very much highball offense at that point, And I had to learn how to hit highball and something that was very much outside my comfort zone. And but I think that I became a better highball hitter because I put myself in that situation. Uh, but I do think that Russia is now starting to run uh, a little bit better. And, and yeah, I've had a lot of coaches of like, hey, this is how we play defense. You know, we're playing rotation defense versus a reading, a uh, reading defense. And, uh, but learning to adjust and, and to make, that's your job, to make the coach happy, one, to do what they do, because ultimately it's it's their responsibility, but then also play within the parameters of what are, what's given to you. And so, um, but yeah, there's very different styles and, and ways to play. And um, But again, I think it, every little detail along the way has helped me like appreciate and take and apply to my game and try to be the best that I can with that. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it makes you more well-rounded whenever you step out onto the court. And I'm kind of curious, so when you look at the Olympics and even just with the national team, when you guys are preparing for another match, how do you scope the competition? Do you guys just kind of stay strong and confident in what your style is, or how, what goes into that as a team? Yeah, we definitely focus on the opponent a little bit. I think we definitely focus more on our side and, and what we're doing, um, but we do watch video um, usually on, you know, kind of their hitters. And then um, also, you know, as passers, like what their servers are, like if there's anything funky or anything going on like that, um, we do that. But then otherwise it's mainly just our side of the net and what we can control. And that's, that's a lot of things. So might as well, excuse me, focus on what's going on on our side of the net. So. Yeah. Living by the saying, controlling the controllables. (laughs) For sure. For sure. Um, yeah, so we we kind of talked about it before that you it still hasn't really sunk in yet that you had the gold medal, but thinking about yep. your experience and how long you've been able to play this game at such a high level, has that kind of sunk in the kind of lifestyle that you had and how special it is that you're capable of doing so? Yeah, yeah. I um, I don't know, when I think about just this 12-year-old girl that had this, like, big dream of, like, being on the stage, you know, like, I never could have imagined or fathomed that it would have allowed me to play professionally for as long as I have and be able to represent the country as long as I have. But when I look back on just all the memories and I was scared, I was scared to leave Nebraska even, you know, like what is California? Like, you know, I just, I was so comfortable where I was at. And and now I have such appreciation for going out and learning new things and trying new things and putting myself in um, environments that, aren't comfortable because that's really the only way to learn and to to get better and um just so grateful and I'm so grateful for my my parents and my support system for kind of guiding me into that direction it, I think it definitely wasn't easy at times and um but I'm I'm really really so grateful and I think just my vision and in, in, in life you know I think the perspective of like I said, this nation and and what we do and how we do things, uh, there's just so much depth there. Yeah, I was trying not to chuckle a little bit earlier because we talked about culture shifts when you go to play overseas, but I can't imagine the transition from Nebraska to California. (laughs) That is a hard one. Yeah, Yeah, it's so different. But you wouldn't think, right? Like being from the States is like not that big, but there's some differences in getting used to certain things. So Oh, definitely, for sure. And then just, you know, as a young athlete, when you were going to compete at the next level and you continued to rise, what's some advice that you would like to give to young girls that are hoping to be in your position one day? Yeah, um, I think I was a little naive when I came out of college. I was like, oh, yeah, I won a national championship. I've been to all these Final Fours. Like, for sure, it's not, you know, when I watched the game, I was like, it's not that big of a jump, but it really is. And I think just staying present in the process like that it's not all going to come at once and to trust in like your abilities and your coaches to put you in the positions um that they feel is best and to trust that um but just 
continue on the process and not all like expect it all to come naturally because uh, it took me, I had to relearn every single skill. When I got to the national team, they're like, we're going to reteach you how to pass. We're going to reteach you how to hit. We're going to do all these things, you know? And I was like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> you know, it's like this, like so humbling, you know, but I'm a better player because of it. And i um, grateful for that, for that trust and that their trust to, to find something in me. And, you know, we've talked about how extensive your resume is, the accolades, but going back to your high school days when you were playing volleyball, you went to Logan View High School. How often do you look back to those times? Uh, you know, somebody just tweeted out a video of we played in one final uh, against Columbus SCOTUS, who was a really good team, had many, many high school championships. And it's so funny to, like, look back on and um, just reflect on – you know, what a great experience. I wasn't going to stay there, to be honest. I, I was looking to maybe transfer to a bigger school because I was worried about getting recruited. And, you know, I had big, wanted to be, you know, bigger plans. But I, I'm so glad I stayed and, and, again, trusted the process that I was right where I needed to be. And it was enough. And um, I got to go to school with my dad. My dad was a teacher there. And so having that presence every day was great. And, um, yeah, just so grateful. And now my head coach, um, her daughter is, and her are now like one of my best friends. And so to have that and to have that support through my life has been wonderful. Yeah. It sounds like you have a wonderful support system and just being in the position that you are in what ways do you feel that you've given back to the community and have, have, have helped grow the game? Yeah. Um, Again, I think leading by example as much as I can and just, you know, how I approach things and conversations that I have with people. I wish I could do more. I think our lifestyle doesn't allow us to be stateside very often. And so and when I do, it's spending time with those people that, that matter most to me. And um, but I think the one thing that has been really cool to me, I actually lost my mom uh, actually today uh, is her uh uh, she passed away, gosh, it'll be 12 years, I think, this year, which is so crazy to me. It seems like she, like, doesn't know the professional life. Anyways, I'm going on a tangent, but uh, to kind of carry her legacy, like, with me, um, I've been able to um, create a, a small, like, foundation a little bit. Um, so a lot of camps that I do, a lot of proceeds go to a family um, battling cancer. Um, every Olympic Games, I've been able to... Um, do t-shirt sales and the percentages have gone to a family battling cancer. And so I've actually got to meet uh, and get to know those families and to have that impact and to see that like direct impact has been really um, something that I've, I'm really passionate about and something that I hope to do more as I kind of taper out of volleyball and more into to normal life situation and, and can give back in that way. Well, Jordan, I'm very sorry to hear that, but it does sound like you're making a difference and you're able to do those things and use your platform for good, which is extremely important in today's world. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, just lastly, before we let you go here, you've talked about when it comes to training, you like to get there early. There are certain things where you want to be humble and, you know, you had to relearn basic skills. When you go back and you think about someone who is in high school right now, they want to go on to the next level. What is one tip that you think is so crucial when it comes to their training that's really going to allow them to flourish in the sport? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Only one tip. That's tough. (laughs) Um, I think for me, like I said, I, I always try to be like one of the first people there. I think, um, it's something that, um, I don't know, it shows your coaches like the buy-in and like that you want to be great. And I think taking care of your body, we, and by getting there early is taking care of your body because you're warming up, you're doing stretches, you're doing rehab, you're doing all these things that are setting you up to have like a long career. And, um, again, I've been very blessed with my physical capability, but I think that started by getting in the weight room, doing rehab, you know, doing all those small things cause they really pay off. And it's easy when you're young, right? You don't have a lot of like aches and pains, but as you get older, you know, it starts to catch up to you. And so being able to, to do those things is really important. Well, it's certainly paying off, (laughs) as you can see, (laughs) three Olympic medals. But, Jordan, we really can't thank you enough for taking the time to join us on Above the Net. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.